Greetings, BUSN 1360 Software Apps for Business. Today we start into PowerPoint Chapter 3, and this is a guided tour of this greater project as we strive for that perfect score. And I love PowerPoint. I hope you do too. Look how fun this is great styles and we can exercise our creative outlet while also using it in a business capacity to convey ideas to really turn data number crunching into visualizations that really help to spark the conversation and convey your point so I love this and I hope that you are enjoying PowerPoint as we go through this so let me exit out of this and let me start as we usually do by going into my IT lab. I want to encourage you, as I always do, to start out by using your book. Have you explored the audio PowerPoints? Those are very cool. Great way to get that information across, uh, perhaps in a, a less reading way, a little more uh, perhaps entertaining. The simulation is a obviously required assignment, but guide your hands through tasks that you will see again in the grader. Very important. The quiz, why is the quiz important? Because it's a reflection tool. It gets you to think about some of those concepts and kind of deepen your thinking with them so that you understand a little more uh, the application of them or just really think about them more. And then finally, the grader. And here's what I always want you to think about with the grader. You know that if you are within what the syllabus tells you is the window of availability, then you're going to receive full points. But I love it. I got an email today from a student who said, <clears throat> I've got my points. I'm good, but I really want to know how to do this particular task. It's driving me crazy. I love that because that's learning. That's how we, we progress ourselves, right? And we'll know how to do it next time because in the real world, we're going to need to know how to do that. So always come back, redo these graders. We want a hundred right there. That's what we want. We want a perfect score right there. So let's tackle that. Now, as usual, I've already opened the grader and I've already downloaded the files. And so let's just take a look at what we have. As you might expect, we have the PowerPoint file. This is my pretend student, Betty Baker. And so we're going to, as a class, be Betty Baker and complete that work. We have our instructions. And I love this. We have a picture of what the final product looks like. Okay. Well, first of all, let me just open up. First of all, let me close that uh, so we don't get confused. And whoo, look at this. Isn't this dramatic? I see some blank slides, so I know we have some work to do. But how powerful is that? I can't wait to find out what we're going to add to it. So let's look at our instructions. Well, there's 11. But, you know, as you look at the instructions, they're kind of doozies, right? They multi-step. That's okay. We're not intimidated by that. We're just going to do it one step at a time. But we have about a page and a half, but only 11 steps. We're just going to walk through it one at a time. That's all we can do. And then what is our end product going to look like? Well, I'm zoomed in here a little bit. This is the picture that they provided. And, um, you know, this is nice because, first of all, look how... Uh, striking, how visually striking this information is. But it also helps me to see, you know, I'm going to create a chart it looks like. And this is ultimately what that will look like. Uh, this is, I'm going to assume, a smart art. We have some things there. Uh, probably a table, if I had to guess. And some more smart art. And so we get to really see what these things, what the finished product is going to look like. Okay. So I'm going to keep that there. And let's jump in to our instructions. I'm going to go back to the top. It does tell us that we're a recruiter at Sperry Consults and that we've been asked to put together a workshop on teamwork. And our presentation will be used at various events sponsored by the company. You decide to add a chart to show the results of a survey on the benefits of working on a team. And you're going to add a smart art graphic to illustrate teamwork skills. Finally, you'll create a table that describes the roles of team members. This sounds like a pretty cool presentation. You might have some uses for it as you do this work. 
Okay, the first step is we've already completed, which is that we downloaded our file. And now we need to insert a clustered bar chart. Clustered bar, we've got to be really careful about that, on slide three. And what's going to be in it? Well, this data right here. And, okay, and so, look. okay, as I look at this, let's just talk through this. Um, this to me looks like the titles. So there's going to be these attributes of what leaders are. What are leadership skills? Well, an attribute of a leader is their ability to work in a team. Another attribute of a leader is their problem solving skills, right? And then we've had this survey and it says 82.9% of respondents agreed that the ability to work in a team was an attribute. So these are our titles of these two columns. Let's say column A and column B. Okay. Then it tells us that as we, you know, create this clustered bar chart, and you might recall that PowerPoint makes a little table like you saw in Excel, and it pre-populates it with some uh, made-up data just to have a chart there. So we're going to have to put in our, our own data, and we're going to have to delete their data. And it says that we're going to have to delete the data in columns C and D. And then we're going to have to resize the data area to include only data A1 through B6. So I'm going to go into PowerPoint, and it said go to slide 3. And the first thing it did is said insert, we're going to insert a chart. So in my placeholder, I have these icons, and here's my chart icon. And now, I'm, I'm going to tell on myself, don't you make fun of me, I'm going to tell on myself. I came in here, and you remember the simulator. And the simulator said to insert a custom clustered column. So when I saw this, I just did a clustered column and went on my merry way trying to follow the instructions. And it marked me wrong because I was wrong. So I don't want you to be wrong. So this is our, my first time going through this correctly with you. I've just told on myself because it said a bar. So I make mistakes and I get graded wrong also. So we're going to make sure we don't lose those points this time. Bars go across, columns go up and down. So that's our, our kicker. So click on bar, then we're over here. That's our bar. It's already selected. Click OK. Much better. Now, again, it's made up some data. I don't know what that data is. Not even going to pay attention to it because we know from our instructions that they wanted this data to be in cells A1 through B6. So I'm just ignoring all this stuff that's in here for right now. I'm going to click in cell A1 and I'm going to type attribute because that's what they told me to type. I'm going to tab and I'm going to type percent of respondents. Double, triple check your spelling and your capitalization. The grader will mark you wrong. I hit enter and so I am in cell A2. I'm going to start typing uh, ability to work in a team. Tab 82.9% enter. It's using its Excel skills because it understands to move back to the starting row. So my next one was problem hyphen solving space skills tab 82.9% enter. Communication skills, space, parenthesis, written, close parenthesis, tab, 80.3%, enter. Leadership, tab, 
72.6%. Enter. Strong work ethic, which all of you have, tab, 68.4% tab. Okay, now we have our data in there, and remember that it said that delete the data in columns C and D. So I'm just going to pick the whole columns. I, I'm just selecting columns C and D. I'm going to right click and I'm going to delete don't need those. Okay, and see how it kind of changed the data area? Now if I try to resize that, I am stuck, right? I could resize it this way, which is not what I want to do, but it, it detected my data. It was very smart that way. It detected my data A1 through B6. If you have any doubt about that, you can move this over and on your um, toolbar, your ribbon here, it says select data. And if I clicked that, okay, I had to click it twice. It brought up this, and this is a good double check. It may look a little funny, but if you remember some of your Excel, all formulas start with an equal. It's simply telling me that this is on worksheet one or sheet one exclamation point. Those dollar signs, remember, describe an absolute reference and it's telling me A1 through B6. So even if you don't understand every little piece in here, you can kind of give it the common sense check and say it does say A1 through B6. So feel good about that. I think I'm on the right, my data is in the right spot, right? Another way to give it the common sense check and what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this little window here. Now, if you needed this back, you could just click Edit Data and it will bring this table back. But I'm going to close that. Oop, I don't know why. Okay, back to my instructions. Nope. Let's, for some reason, it flipped me back to the Word where the instructions were open. I would like to be back in PowerPoint. Um, and again, <clears throat> excuse me, I could click Edit Data and pull that back up if I if I needed to get this back. Okay, another common sense check is just to look down here, okay, and does this make sense? Well, I've got these attributes over here, strong work ethic, leadership, and their percentages are being graphed, and that, that looks right. You know, it, it, it passes a, a common sense test. Now, I'm not fully where I need to be, and I know that because the picture looks very different. Oops, I need to be able to. Okay, the picture looks very different, but we're not done yet either. So let's go a little bit further. We've just typed in our data, but I do feel good about step number two because I'm kind of uh, just giving it a common sense check. Now, still working with our chart, we are going to make some changes. We're going to apply the style three. Uh, chart style. So back to PowerPoint and remember that what is selected will be affected. So you want to check the dots. See how the dots are around the outside? Very important, very important. Don't want to have any dots on the inside. See how this is dots? Because that that would be affecting something else. If you have dots on the inside, you want to click out on the uh, slide and then select your object again, just one click. Okay, or you can always click on the edge of the object because this is an object. Okay, chart tools, that was a little discussion there. We're on the design tab and we need to pick style number three. One, two, three, hover over it and I get that tool tip. Do you see it? I can't point at it because it'll go away if I move my mouse. Style 3, click on that. And that looks a little like the picture, doesn't it? So I think I'm on the right track. Excellent. And we're, gonna, we're going to remove the legend. Well, removing stuff is easy <laughs> because all you got to do is click on it. So here's the legend. What if you didn't know? You said, I, I don't know what a legend is. Well, you know what you could do? You could come up here to Format. 
this is like I, I talked to you about this when we did Excel also see format and over here legend this I can either click to select or I can pick it out of the drop-down box either way now that I have it selected see the dots just press the delete key on your keyboard and the graph said oh I got more space and it expanded a little bit it also wants me to delete the chart title okay well I can either click it or I can use my technique of going up here chart title there it is delete on your keyboard it gives your your chart a little more room and that's kind of a nice thing they want me to delete more they want me to delete the horizontal axis well horizontal axis there it is down here delete and they want me to delete grid lines well oops Here's those grid lines, and this that's you know this is a great way to select those grid lines to make sure you've got exactly what you are supposed to have. Press the delete on your keyboard. Excellent. I'm going to save that because I feel like we've done a lot of work, and I'm going to save that. We're not finished with step three though yet. It says select the vertical axis and change the font size to 16 point. Well, okay select the vertical axis we're going to change the font size to 16 Ooh, big font okay we're going to change the color uh, and it says specifically to black text 2 so here's my font color now we've got to be really careful here Okay, now see, I would have sworn that that is black, but it says that that's actually gray. And I'm going to tell on myself again, and I'm going to say the first time I went through this, I went, oh, okay, well, good, it's down here in my recent colors. And I went down here to this black. Well, now it won't do it. And when I hover over it, it says black, but it does not say black text 2. Only when I looked at all my colors up here did I see, okay, now come on, See how it says black text to, and the reason that, I'm sorry the graph is not showing, my computer is very, very slow. Okay, so after I clicked it, it, my, it took my computer a second, so I apologize. But that's how you do it. You make sure that you are picking the correct one. Okay, and you use those little tool tips to come up to say black text to. Okay, and then we still have that selected. The dots are still going around all this text. They wanted us to bold. So we clicked on bold. I like if once I get that save, just in case I mess something else up. Now it asks me as the last part of step number three, change the data label font size to 16. Well, I'm going to keep using my process. Data labels, look at that. So what are the data labels? They're these guys. See how they're all selected, not just one. All of them are selected. And this is a great way to make sure you have selected exactly what you need. And then I need to change the font size to 16. Excellent. Okay, let's save that. That was step number three. Let's go on to step number four. Now it says to insert an interconnected rings smart art graphic from the relationship category on slide four. And we're going to fill that smart art in with all these things right here. All righty, I like smart art. Let's go over here, go to slide number four. And when I look at my little icons here, smart art easy way to pick it and it did tell me I mean I could look through every single one of these but let's limit the uh, smart art that we see to only those that fit this category relationship now it looked like from the picture that what are we looking for we're looking for something like this 
but it's not going to be done yet. We just know that it has something to do with some rings like this. Let's go to PowerPoint and, well, this is not it. You know, let's look for something. It's got to have some circles. It's got to have some kind of rings. Here's some circles. But see the little tooltip? It says equation. Well, that's not it. Vertical equation. Convergent. Oh, goodness. Well, here's some circles. No. And you see how I'm just hovering my mouse over it, and then PowerPoint is telling me what it's called. Radial cycle. Diverging radial cycle. Here's some rings. Basic Venn. Venn diagrams. See, this one looked very close, didn't it? Linear Venn. Radial Venn. Ah! They made me work for it, didn't they? They made, picked the very last one. Let's pick that. And OK. Awesome. So right now we're just starting out with three. It will add more as we need them. If you do not see your text box over here, then Smart Art Tools Design, make sure that this button is pressed, Text Pane. Right? Okay, so we're just going to type some things in here. They told us to type listening. Make sure that you have the um, capitalization right. Now, if I hit Enter, did you notice that it inserted a bullet point? Um, that's okay for now, but I don't want to keep doing that. Otherwise, I have to delete those things. So I'm going to go ahead and type questioning, and I'll show you what I mean. Now, I'm going to arrow down instead of hitting Enter so that I, I use up that placeholder that it provided. This one is persuading. I'm going to arrow down again and helping. Now this time I need a new uh, line so I'm going to hit enter. Sharing and I'm going to hit enter. Participating. And do not hit enter. I've got my six rings. I've got six things up here. I'm good. They're hard to read right now but I think some formatting changes are coming. So let's save and that completed that step. Look at us. We're, we're good. Now we're going to make, of course, some formatting changes. It says the first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply, apply the SmartArt Intense Effect style. Okay, the SmartArt Intense Effect. Okay, now, when I look at this picture, I see that I've got dots around just one circle and I'm concerned by that because perhaps as I begin to apply formatting, it may only apply to that one circle. We like to say what is selected will be affected. So I want the entire object to be selected. So I'm going to move my mouse over this edge and I'm going to click. See how the whole object is selected now? Okay. Up here on my Smart Art Tools, I'm on the Design tab, and I see some styles, and I've got lots of them. I don't know which one is intense, so it's probably not this one. That says Simple Fill, White Outline, Subtle Effect, Moderate Effect, I see a pattern here, Intense Effect, hey, let's pick that one. That's the one we needed, Intense Effect, and let's see. What else did it say? Okay, that was the first part of that step. And then it said change the font color for all of the shapes in that object. So we have the object selected to white background one and then apply bold. So again, since we have the object, not just one circle, but the whole object selected, whatever changes we make are going to apply to everything inside it. So I'm going to go to home and they said they wanted the text to be white, background one. Sure enough, that's what that first one is. Going to pick that. They also wanted bold. Boom. Okay, so yours should look like this. Save. Let's keep on marching forward. Look at this. We're almost at the end of the page. This is awesome. Now we're going to go on slide six and we're going to insert a three column, nine row table and then we're going to do some stuff to the table. We're going to merge some cells. Alrighty, let's jump on over there 
Slide six, here we come. Here we are, Belbin's Teams Rules. Okay, <clears throat> as I look at my little icons, this first one looks like a table. So I'm going to click on that. And it said we need three columns and we need how many? Nine rows. And I'm going to click on OK. Excellent. Now, it the instructions begin column one. So column one is what we're looking at. And the cells in rows one, two, three. So I'm going to select those. Up here in tables, layout. And it wants me to merge. See the merge? Merge. And then, still in column one, select four, five, six, and merge. And then finally, still in column one, seven, eight, nine, merge. So this is kind of cool. Um, it looks like they're kind of grouping these rows, right? So that's kind of a cool trick. That's something to remember. You know, you pick up some really good techniques that you can use for other things. And so believe it or not, that was step six, moving right along. Woo, look at step seven. Okay, <laughs> look at step seven. It looks like they're going to take us through each row. And within each row, they're going to tell us what to type in each column. Remember, we had three columns. So they're going to tell us what to put in each column. So this is a lot of typing. I will do it with you, and I'll read through it. Um, maybe if you have the video in the background, you can listen and kind of type. Um, or you can skip through this part if you need the silence to type on your own. But what they're telling us is that row one, column one, well, this is column one, and this is as close to row one as we can get. We're going to type action-oriented roles. And I'm going to tab, because as I tab, I go over to column two. And an, it looks like an action-oriented role is a shaper. How about that? And I'm going to tab again to column three, challenges the team to improve. So if you push back from the forest, you know, or from the tree to be able to see the forest, look what they're doing. They're saying we're going to have some action-oriented roles, and here they are, a shaper, and that's somebody who challenges the team to improve. And then our instructions say to go to row two, column two, and they say the next person that we may have is an implementer. Make sure you get your spelling right and your capitalization. And this person puts ideas into action. Okay? And so these are action-oriented roles. And our third one is a completer slash finisher tab ensures thorough comma timely completion. Well, those do sound action-oriented. So now I'm on row four, column one, and these are people-oriented roles, tab. And now I'm in column two of row four, a coordinator, tab, acts as a chairperson, right? And what is my next one? Team space worker, those are capitalized, encourages cooperation. And then, let's see, what do we have? I'm sorry, when I, I should be using my keyboard here. People are, because now we're in row six. This is resources investigator. That's a great person to have on a team tab, because this person explores outside opportunities. Okay, now here we are in column one, row seven, column one, thought-oriented roles. Plant. Okay, what is a plant? Well, a plant presents new ideas and approaches. 
I hit my tab key, and it it was smart like Excel. It understood to go to uh, the next row and into column two. And it says this position should be a monitor slash evaluator. And this person analyzes analyzes the options tab. Specialist provides spe specialized skills. Okay, so a lot of typing, but not too difficult. We've got it all in there. Look how nice our table looks, looking good. Did we save? Let's save. Go back to our instructions. Let's go on to step eight. Make the following changes to the table. Apply the no style no style table grid table style so basically we're going to put no style on our table and then we've got some more steps to do but let's just start one at a time here let's go now first things first what is selected because that is what will be affected we want this object to be selected so make sure the dots are on the outside now an additional thing in a table that you would need to look for see my cursor flashing there that's an indicator that I'm editing the table I don't want to edit the table I want to format the table so I'm going to click on any edge not on a dot but on the edge on any of the edges so that see how my cursor is no longer flashing Okay, that's because now I've got the whole object selected. I'm no longer editing the object. All right, so what did it ask me to do? It said apply the no style table grid. Well, I need to, here's my table, and let me click back on design. I was on layout because I need these table styles. And I'm going to look for more. Now, here's something important. Notice that you are already partially scrolled down so you need to scroll to the top because this style that we need no style no grid is at the very top so you're gonna to have to scroll up or you might miss it I'm gonna pick that alrighty so we applied that now it says change the font color for the text in the table to white now what do you have selected if your cursor is flashing this is not going to work. My entire object is selected. Home. And remember a moment ago, we selected that exact color that's in the instructions, the white background one. So it remembers it. That's what that little white bar underneath there means. It means I remember exactly the color that you chose a minute ago. So all I have to do is click that. If you had any doubt, you could pick it out again. Okay, but we don't need to because it remembers the color that we chose. And then, okay, we've got the white background one. It says to center vertically the text in the table. Now, once again, I have the object selected. There's no cursor flashing. There's nothing inside this selected. The whole object is selected. If I go to my table tools and I'm going to go to layout, and my alignment options are right here in the middle. Now look at these, the text, and see how it's all pushed to the top of the cell? And sometimes that makes things really hard to read because you can't, it's like, does this go with this? Does that go with this? It, you know, it gets kind of hard. So what they're telling us, and keep an eye on those, is of these buttons right here. Okay, now there's center up here. But center means horizontally, side to side. Below that is the center vertically button. I'm going to click that. And did you see the text move off of the top down towards the middle? So everything, because the whole object was selected, so all these cells were affected. And all of the text moved to the center, still on the left side, so it didn't affect it side to side it affected it up and down it's a little easier to read now I'm gonna save that okay uh, we do have one more step before we're finished with this task it says to apply dark blue accent one shading to the cells in column one so just column one 
I select all those. I'm clicking, press and drag. And I need to apply some shading. Well, I'm going to go home. And where is my shading? Here's one, shape fill. I could do that. It's probably, you know, a lot of times, and it shouldn't make a difference. Let, let's just be more proper. Under table tools, design, see the shading? Let's use that. And I'm sorry, they wanted us to apply dark blue. Well, this one's kind of dark blue. Oh, sure enough, that's it. Dark blue accent one. So as I hovered over that, did you see the little tooltip came up? Dark blue accent one. So that's it. And it was just those three cells. And if again, if we think about the picture, um, let me zoom back out. Isn't that? There it is right there. It looks just like it. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Save. Woo, we're moving right along here, folks. Here we are on slide seven. Convert the list to a grouped list smart art graphic on slide seven, a grouped list. So PowerPoint, let's go on down to slide seven. Now I'm going to select all of this and along the top I am on my home tab you'll see this button convert to smart art now it said that it wanted me to pick a grouped list right well you know we could looking at the picture is going to be very helpful in this case otherwise we have to just really look and look but it's not in this initial quick list so I'm going to click on more smart art okay so I clicked on more now again I can look through each and every one of these there's nothing in the world wrong with that but it might be faster if I, I say I know I'm trying to get a list so let me kind of filter this by this category list now let, let's cheat we're cheating together so it's not cheating when I look at the picture, this is kind of what I'm looking for. Do you see that? This kind of shape. So as we look at our different shapes, you know, this is probably not it. That's probably not it. Sometimes you do have to look carefully because it might, the little thumbnail here might look a little different than you might think. Like this kind, of, oh, lo and behold, that is it. Okay, do you see, oh, there it is. Do you see that? And it says grouped list. So I'm going to pick that. I'm going to click on OK. Wow! Doesn't that look so different? I mean, which one would you rather read? The one that you saw a minute ago or this? I mean, this is cool, right? Excellent. OK, so let's go back to our instructions. We, we completed step nine, so we need to save. But then once again, we're going to imply the intense effect, just like we did a minute ago. We're going to imply, uh, apply that intense effect. So back to PowerPoint, first thing I'm going to do is save. And my smart art object, the whole object is selected, so that's good. And remember these smart art styles? And up here, now we kind of remember it was this one at the end, but we do need to just make 100%. And sure enough, that tooltip told me that's the intense effect. So that's good. I'm going to save again because I think that's good. Let's see, let's go back to our instructions. It said select the text, stage one forming, stage two storming, stage three norming, and stage four performing. That's a common business leadership framework, forming, storming, norming, and performing. Let me teach you a little leadership because we, we have a leadership class that's great. I hope you'll take it. And what it says is, you ever, you're asked to work on a committee or a team of some kind, and they call you into the conference room and there's some food, and everyone's being so polite, okay? Nobody wants to take too much food. Nobody really talks too much to each other. That's because the team is still forming. You're new. You don't want to offend anybody. Um, you don't really know anybody. You're shy. That's the forming stage. Then you get into storming. Do you know what storming is? <clears throat> storming is we're going to get this done we're going to get this um, over with and I'm the leader and somebody else says no I'm the leader and somebody else says no I, I'm sorry I am the leader well you do this and I do this and we do this and we just brrr, sometimes you can get a lot of conflict uh, conflicts during storming um, then you get into norming 
well, I'm, I'm the leader. No, you're not the leader because that's what Fred always does. Fred is always the one who does that particular test. He's really good at it. He's got a lot of experience. You just touch base with him. Right, because this, this is all normal. You've, you've done this before as a team. You understand each other as a team. You know, um, <clears throat> Samantha, she's our best writer. Why don't you have her write something up? Because that's what she, she always does. She's a really good writing. That's her normal thing that she does as part of the team. Right, and then you get into performing. Um, performing becomes um, you, you're not just uh, this is not just normal. You are good at it. Well, if we need two people to write, that's going to be uh, Samantha and Fred because man, they're good at that. And you know what? We're going to get Dave because Dave is always excellent at, at this. And and you just said we don't even we, look. We're, we're going to get together next week because I will be pretty much finished by then. Right, because the team is really super good. So, first of all, little leadership lesson, but that's what that's about. Forming, storming, norming, and performing. And they want us to select that text, and they want us to change the font color to not just black, but black text too. And then they want us to bold it. So, let's go back to PowerPoint. Now, there's uh, not necessarily a quick way to do this. You just select it, but it's not hard either. Home. We need to make sure that we set this to black. Wasn't it this one? Yeah, black text to and also bold. Now here's perhaps the kind of time saver. When I select that again, remember that it remembers. This isn't just any old black. This is exactly the color we chose them indigo. So just click the A and bold. Do the same thing for each one. You see that little resize there? Love smart art. Save. Folks, that puts us at the last step, which is simply to save. I like to do that uh, frequently. So save. I'm going to close. Always close it. And let's return to um, our grader. And we need to upload. So we're over here on step three. Choose our file. Make sure you're in the right folder. You know, I like to stay organized. Very important so you don't submit the wrong file. Successfully uploaded. Submit. Oh, I'm so amazed that that button worked. It doesn't work for me often. Does it work for you? This was the score I got a moment ago, so hang with me because um, we're not quite ready yet. I can click on the three dots and view submissions. Oh! 98%! I am so close. So you know, I know, we want to find out what did we do wrong. Let's go to submission two. And this gives me the opportunity to share with you um, something else that has been helpful to a couple students. Um, in addition to looking at your feedback in this little window, over here on the side, there are some buttons that you may want to explore and you can download the file maybe you're working at a different computer and you need you know to continue working just download that file but I want to show you live comment some people like this and some people don't okay I'm just tell you now you see down here my pretend student was Betty Baker and it says LC which is live comment and I'm gonna click that to open it you know whenever you open something, enable editing, click that. And it starts off, oh, sorry, you won't get that, I'm sorry. Um, it starts off with just this summary page. Now, I'm going to tell you something. That's great, this is a little summary page, and you can read that. Um, added in place with elements, uh, highlight in red color. Okay, one comment added in place with red color. Okay, you can read this, but what this is going to do is it's going to confuse me because it's caused slide number one to be slide number two and slide number two is now slide number three because it inserted this so read this by all means but for right now I'm going to select and delete okay you can always close without saving but I want my slides to be in order um, and it, it is trying to help me with that because down here at the bottom it's saying submission slide is number one but this live comment the whole thing is it's got comments in it and the easiest way to review comments is to go under review 
and you may remember this from Word because this is a feature that's in Word, it's in Excel, right? And once I have review, I can click Show Comments. That's one thing I may want to do. Well, on slide number one, I don't have any comments, but there are some in the presentation. So click on Next and it moved me all the way down to slide four. So that's where my problem is. I don't, I don't know what the problem is. It says two points were deducted in the paragraph respecting. Oh, did I type? I did I skip one? Oh, well, see what it was I supposed to type. I missed one, I think. Listening, questioning, persuading. Oh, Y'all, I did. I missed. I totally skipped uh, respecting. Okay, well, good, because now I got to show you that. And I think, yeah, there were no more comments. So that looks like it's the only error I have. So cool. So, you know, I want to know how to do this. And so I want to get my perfect score. Let's go back in. You all probably saw that on the video, and you were probably screaming at me to fix that mistake. Okay, so I'm going to go to slide number four. I'm going to click my smart art. Now, respecting needs to go in right after persuading. So I'm going to click at the end of persuading, hit the enter key, respecting. How about that? Much better. Save, close. You know I got to have my 100. I just have to. Let's go all the way back. Course materials. Chapter 3, the greater, choose file, PowerPoint, open, upload, success, submit. I want my A, I want my 100. And of course the button's not going to work for me this time, so I'm going to close that. It's all right. Try to be just a little patient. View submissions. Let it grade. Look how fast you got that feedback. Woohoo! 100. Woohoo! Look at that perfect score. So I've done it. You can do it too. And I hope this video was helpful. Appreciate you folks. Keep up the good work. Thank you for all you are doing.